Xbox, devs, anyone building tech, your UX is letting people down. Clunky handheld, slow apps, wasted time. And it doesn't have to be this way. There's one simple trick that can make experiences flow for gamers and beyond. Let me explain. So I never even noticed how much the placement sucks. Now that it's a button that I need to use regularly, ah! Why is this thumbstick in the way of reaching it? Your comments on the Xbox ROG Ally really hit home. Plunky tech frustrates everyone, not just gamers. I've been in the games industry a long time. I was there for early Xbox and then for VR. And what I've learned is one universal truth, and that is that a great user experience can change everything. Today, we'll talk about a dead simple trick for Xbox, game developers, and even app builders to make users love you. Let's dive in. It's easy and cheap to think about UX from the start, but that is where the Xbox ROG Ally falls flat. A Windows 11 update, an Xbox app update, a BIOS update, AMD driver updates, updates for ROG's Armory Crate, and multiple restarts along the way. It's frustrating, plain and simple. What I expect from a handheld, I should turn it on and it just works. Games are ready, one click to launch, playing in seconds. No app updates blocking my fun. No BIOS dives for OS downloads. X fans felt it too. One said, seemed like a very chaotic device and button registration is beyond slow. It just stopped working during gameplay. Another, the ROG Xbox Ally X completely froze up during first install. Console-like experience? Nope. There's typically another series of updates you gotta do that's within Armor Crate. So buried within the software, like the ASUS software is another layer of like BIOS and firmware things. I had to redo all my benchmarks, but I realized this shouldn't be the case on an Xbox branded product. Does Xbox test this stuff anymore? Do they try real world scenarios with gamers? Do they see what that first user experience is like? Regularly. Ah! Why is this thumbstick in the way? Of Microsoft always has lagged Apple here. iPhones in comparison have been frictionless magic despite their flaws. Windows, a slog. And gamers get it. Time's the real currency, not cash. We'll pay for just works. That's why handhelds, even consoles, can thrive in tough times. Look, I think the Xbox Game Pass price hike really hurt the Xbox brand. But this lack of paying attention to the user experience, that's really killing trust. And here's the thing, whether you're working or playing, every single little glitch is stealing time. So here's the thing. I have said for a while, I actually think what we're, what we are doing are being the beta testers for what the next Xbox console is going to be. Mm. Remember when games started as a spark in someone's mind? We didn't have fancy tools, just scribbles on paper, photocopies from books, and endless brainstorming over coffee. We even mocked up paper prototypes for users to try. Why? to get a feel for what the users would experience before the team exploded and executives were looming. It was time boxed, it was cheap, and it was pure magic. We'd walk in the player's shoes. Take Microsoft's Pinball Arcade. It was an indie game made by two guys who were friends with Alexei Pajitnov, you know, the guy who made Tetris. Why Tetris, my Our first menu was cool. But it had these rotating balls. You had to scroll endlessly to see options. The test team hated it. It was pure friction. So we ditched the flash and we created a clean and functional menu. Was it less exciting? Perhaps, but it was a no hassle experience. We used to think about the first user experience, even in the store. What is the box going to look like? This is a mock-up of the Crimson Skies box I just happened to still have. You see, We'd imagine when they got home and they were unboxing, what was that like? Was it like opening a treasure chest? Did you get a cool manual like this one and was it in theme? What about a world map? Did you get dice? And how fast could you get into the game? The goal was to put the disc in and play. And that empathy, that consideration, that actually built trust. But now, too many experiences. Forget it. My first Microsoft gig? product support. I talk to our customers every single day. 
and it changed me forever. The downside? I still dread phones. The upside? I had deep empathy for our customers. They just wanted the tech to work and they would call and they would be frustrated and they wouldn't even know sometimes what they had installed on in their system. My favorite call was at 4 a.m. on a Sunday. I was working four tens and I had a guy who wanted to land his plane in flight sim and he was blind. It forced me to think in a completely different way. Today, he wouldn't even be able to get someone on the phone. And the thing is, it's easy to walk in the customer's path. All you have to do is invite them into your lab, let them play, set them down in front of your game or hand them the Xbox ROG ally and see what they do. See where they get stuck. And when you find friction, fix it and then try it again. Run the tests again. It's simple. And here's the thing, Xbox can do it, game developers can do it, app makers can do it. You just need to care like it's your own time. Can we bring that empathy and magic back? I sure hope so. You've got to start with the customer experience and work backwards to the technology. And as we have tried to <clears throat> come up with a strategy and a vision for Apple, um, it started with what incredible benefits can we give to the customer? Where can we take the customer?